Welcome to St. Luke's Worship. It is the second Sunday of Easter. We will begin our service with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life, for water to bathe in, water to drink, for water to play in, and waters that inspire wonder, for water that gives life to our planet. We give, give you thanks, thanks O God, God, for the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place, for the water from our tap, for rain and snow, for our local water sources from Nine Mile Creek to the Mississippi River. We, we give you thanks, thanks O God, God, for the water of this place. We give you thanks for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family through the flood waters, for leading your people Israel through the sea into freedom, for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought, for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching the Samaritan woman's thirst with living water. We give, give you thanks, thanks for your salvation, salvation through water. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized and for all who gather here, for God, parents, and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for our brothers and sisters in Christ whom we have never seen but to whom we are bound. We give, give you thanks, thanks for the life of all the baptized. We give you thanks for the life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Jesus' death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people, sent out for the life of the world. We give you thanks, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Again, good morning, and so glad that you are here gathered in worship. There are a few announcements to share with you. Uh, Wednesday night church is, will be online in the week ahead. At 4 p.m., we have our family worship for children. At 6 p.m., our adult study and this Sunday, this Wednesday, excuse me, will be on Earth Day, a care of creation study. Following that, the next four weeks, starting April 29th through May 20th, we'll have a four-week series on the book of Revelation. That will have a 1 p.m. and a 6 p.m. opportunity. And then at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights, our youth group gathers as well. You can find all this information on our website, stlukesbloomington.org. You can stay connected through our e-news, an email that goes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, including our prayer requests. And you can receive those and share a prayer request by contacting the office at office at stlukesbloomington.org. Let us continue with our worship and our gathering hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, after your death and resurrection, you sent your followers into the world to proclaim your resurrection to the entire world. Send us into the world to bear witness to all you have done in our lives. Amen. Hi kids, come close. I have a message just for you. If you remember, last week was Easter and I was running around looking for something that I wanted to share with you. If you remember, it was hallelujah. We were so happy that Jesus is alive again. But when I was looking, one of the things I found were plants that were growing in my garden. Even though there was snow on the ground, there were plants growing. And that's one of the best things about Easter time is it's a time of new birth and a time of new life. If you see, this is my kitchen window and I have this beautiful setup um, where I'm growing plants that I'm gonna put in my garden this summer. I'm gonna show you some of them. The, this is a sunflower. You know, sunflowers grow up to be about 10 feet tall. It starts this tiny with just a little seed that you plant in the dirt. You think it's gone, you think nothing's there, but it's alive. And this is a little basil plant. And here's some tomato plants. They're not red, they're still green. And they were just, two weeks ago, they were just seeds. And that's the message of Easter, is that things that you think are not alive, things that you think may never come back again, they just need time to grow. God gives them life and God gives them new birth. Will you please pray with me? 
Dear God, thank you for the new life that we have in Jesus and the new life that we have in Easter. Please help us to grow just like the seeds are growing, to be fruitful and to be um, the best children that we could possibly be. Amen. A reading from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, beginning with the 15th verse. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have seen the Lord. God is mighty. God is powerful. God with us, Jesus Christ. We have seen the Lord. God is lowly. God is merciful. The Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Now, how do we reconcile this? This is the same question I asked on Easter Sunday when I used the gospel of Mark's resurrection story that ended with, and the women telling nothing to anyone. Now this disputed, longer ending in Mark's gospel states, these signs will accompany those who believe. They will be able to pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. The Bible commentary I like the best gives no insights to this verse, nor do another half dozen other commentaries that I researched. Furthermore, this reading doesn't show up in the Revised Standard Lectionary, nor in the Narrative Lectionary, which assign the Bible readings for each week. 
Using a lectionary for readings helps in two ways. First, it makes sure preachers don't use only a limited number of readings, choosing their favorites. And second, it also helps the congregation walk through most of the Bible. However, not this passage, along with some others. For example, if you look in the old green Lutheran book of worship, it had psalms in the middle, just like our current red book of worship has. However, the green one did not have all of the psalms because those who put that book together didn't feel that all the songs, psalms were worshipful. So I created a six-week confirmation class called the Forbidden Psalms. The students loved reading them and shared them with their parents. Sadly, some of the parents were upset that I was teaching them. In my conversations with them, I reminded the parents that these psalms are in the Bible, so I think it's negligent not to study them. As we had conversation, what I found is what really bothered these parents is that they didn't know these psalms or didn't understand them. And after some time of learning about them, they ultimately appreciated them. That class was repeated with some of those same parents encouraging others to take it. We cannot cherry pick scriptures. I used Mark's resurrection story for Easter because it was the assigned text and the last reading from the narrative lectionary on Mark. St. Luke's made a New Year's resolution, just as we did the last two years, in reading an, an entire gospel from beginning to Easter and beyond, if necessary. So today, I am completing that task, going off of the lectionary to share the final verses of Mark. So what are we to do with this stated accompanying signs for the believers that includes picking up snakes and drinking deadly things? Two related stories, one funny, the other dangerous. First, from a family vacation we took to South Dakota where we enjoyed a day at the Reptile Gardens. One of the shows my family saw there was all about snakes. The show highlighted South Dakota's most venomous snake, the prairie rattler. The presenter, while holding one of the rattlesnakes, shared that they are quite dangerous, especially to young men in their early 20s. For some reason, they were the most likely to be bit. The presenter said, there was one constant in almost every one of those encounters, alcohol. And so he shared this warning. If you are a young man and you see a drunk rattlesnake, keep your distance. The second story I wish was a joke. You might have heard the name Reverend Jamie Coots. He and his son Cody are snake handling preachers. Actually, only one still is a snake handling preacher. Jamie died in 2014 from a snake bite. It's estimated that over 100 churches in the United States use poisonous snakes during worship. Snake handling is a long-standing tradition, one that took root more than a century ago. These pastors believe that to take up serpents is a form of religious expression. As we read, Mark 16, 18 states, those who believe will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Coots and his followers believe that God calls upon them to handle venomous serpents and to drink other poisons. Even if they are bitten, they will refuse medical treatment because they believe that they are worthy of God's faith and that their fate is in God's hands. Sadly, such misunderstanding is at work today in the church. We have been advised to not gather in person for worship. Some other churches are doing so with their pastors using this same logic. A recent story told of a parishioner at a church that attended worship died of COVID-19. The pastor of that congregation refuted the medical evidence, instead stating that his member died of a heartbreak. What that pastor does not understand is that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And during this time of physical distancing, we can still gather for worship. You are proving that right now by participating in this recorded worship. And that's the message we hear in the gospel reading from Mark. The Easter reading, using the original ending 
found in two of the best and oldest manuscripts, ends with the women, upon hearing that Jesus had risen, fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Yet here we are, almost 2,000 years later, joined together in worship, celebrating the resurrection. How? The Gospel of Mark tells us that the young man the women met told them, go tell Jesus' disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of them to Galilee. And we are left with this belief. Jesus kept his promise. And the disciples who were hiding without being told followed Jesus' instructions and met him on the mountain. I did find one commentary that took on the challenge of interpreting Mark's ending. William Barclay, from his writing in 1954, shares this wisdom. Although the ending is different from the rest of the Gospels, and most likely in addition, the person who wrote it obviously believed that the church had certain tasks committed to it by Jesus. Barclay identified four. The church has a preaching task. It is the duty of the church and every Christian to tell the story of the good news of Jesus to those who have not heard. Second, The church has a healing task. Christianity is concerned with the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. That was what we found in our readings last week. The amazing grace and love of Christ brings brings peace to a troubled soul like Mary Magdalene, from whom Jesus had cast out seven demons, welcomes those who doubt like his disciples who hid in fear, and in Paul's case forgives, forgives those who oppose him. Three, the church is a source of strength to endure this world. On Wednesday night, our St. Luke's youth gathered online and we looked at another one of Paul's writings. In Romans 5, he states, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering. Knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That leads us to Barclay's fourth point. The church is never left alone. Christ works with it, and is in it, and works through it. The Lord of the church is still in the church, and still has the Lord's power. And so Mark's gospel finishes with the message that the Christian life is the life lived in the presence and in the power of Jesus, who who was crucified and rose again. I know this to be true because of the signs and wonders that accompany you, the people, of St. Luke's, the body of Christ at work in this time and place, a mission post, making a difference through our acts of service and prayer to our fellow members, to our local community, and throughout the world. As Paul said to the church of Ephesus, I say to you, I know your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. And let me close with this. I would be negligent if I didn't. What to do about the instruction for believers to hold snakes and drink poison? The word used in Mark is the same used in other parts of the Bible describing snakes. Paul writes in his first letter to the church of Corinth, chapter 10, verse 9, We must not test Christ as some of them did. They were killed by snakes. And in his second letter, chapter 11, 3, but I'm afraid that your minds will be led away from your true and pure following of Christ, just as Eve was tricked by the snake with his evil ways. Let us not be tempted to take the Bible literally, which leads to much confusion and harm. Let us instead rely on the fullness of the story as believers participate in the true and pure following of Christ found in Mark and the other Gospels. We have been commissioned by Jesus to go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. 
And as Jesus was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, the disciples went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. Just as you don't need to physically gather in person to worship, you also don't need to be physically present to proclaim the good news to the whole, Christ, whole creation and share signs of the grace and love of Christ. Talk about a timely message. Not only for this time of physical distancing and the struggles that we face in our world today, but also let us not forget that this is the Sunday prior to Earth Day. This is your challenge for the days ahead. How can we celebrate Earth Day and the whole creation, which includes one another. One way is to simply follow the lead of a few of our St. Luke's members. Gina Griffith, Janet Lyson, and Diane Anderson are three that I'm aware of, and I'm sure there are many more, who are making homemade face masks. On Friday, during the governor's daily address, an initiative was announced for all who are willing and able to make masks and deliver them to their local fire department between 2 and 10 p.m. this on Saturday, April 25th. How will you proclaim the good news to all creation? I look forward to hearing what you do, which could also include joining our first Zoom Bible study at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, April 22nd, with care of creation being the topic. Details for this gathering will be shared in the e-news and on our website. And let me not forget to congratulate all those who did read through the entire Gospel of Mark. If you didn't, you don't need to wait until next year to do so, because in 2021, our resolution is to read the entire Gospel of Luke. But the Gospel of Mark is arguably the first and the shortest of all the Gospels. It can be read in just a few hours. To share the good news, it is helpful to know the story. So while you continue to physically distance, join others throughout the ages in learning the fullness of God's love in Christ through the words of Mark's gospel. Amen. Let us join together in singing Beautiful Savior.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together as people of God, sharing our prayers of the church and the world to God who raised Jesus to new life. After each petition, I will say, Risen Lord, please respond. Hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon the church, and especially its leaders, that they may lead us in boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God present in the world. Risen Lord. Hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon creation, and especially resting fields, that the coming harvest be abundant. We pray for the protection of farmers and grocers, truck drivers and food processors, that all the world may be fed. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon our leaders and especially on executives like our president, governor, and mayors, that their decisions be guided by compassion and care for all. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon the marginalized, especially the poor and the needy. Let us be mindful of our neighbors who have since lost their jobs, are unemployed or underemployed, for those who are homeless. That our communities work to ensure that everyone's basic needs are met. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon the sick, those that are hospitalized or in quarantine, as well as all who care for them. That your will of healing and wholeness be at work in their lives. Risen Lord, Hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon this congregation that we may be an example of love, grace, and service in our neighboring communities. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Send your spirit upon us and use the example of the saints to keep us firm in our faith. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Through the resurrection of your Son, O God, you destroyed the power of death and removed your people's shame. By the power of the Spirit, raise us from sin and seat us at the Paschal Feast, that we may rejoice in the gift of salvation Jesus has won for us. Amen. Let us now join in sharing our tithes and our offerings. I welcome Susan Sartell, Congregational Secretary, to share a few words. I am Susan Sartell. I am your church council secretary. My job is to take notes and type up the minutes every month, the minutes of the council and of the executive board meetings. It's a good job for someone who likes to know what's going on behind the scenes. I've been asked to tell you what brought me to St. Luke's. Well, family, of course. My parents moved to Bloomington in 1971, and about a year later, they joined this church and transferred my membership along with theirs. I was in college at the time. Uh, over the years, I became a regular visitor because my parents were always here, and when I came home, I came too. Uh, why am I still here? Well, family again. Uh, this place has meant a lot for our family. They, the people here have supported us through good times and bad times. Dad did not want to move up to Sauk Rapids to live with me, so I had to move down here to live with him. And why bother shopping for a church? This is our family's church. I have also been asked to talk about giving. 
Well, obviously, I give a little bit of my time. I wouldn't call typing a talent. I'd call it a skill. And maybe we should amend what we, we say, give of your time, your talent, and your skill, as well as your, your financial resources. Like many things along the way, uh, we learn more through what we see our parents do than through what they say. And my parents never really talked much about giving to the church, but they were always giving. Every Saturday would have some time set aside for getting ready for church on Sunday. I would usually start with my mother herding me into the bathroom to scrub and shampoo me. Dad would get the shoe shine kit out of the closet and shine everybody's shoes. Later, he would get his check and his offering envelope ready to go. It wasn't until I moved in with him that I realized that there was one more step. He had to make a pile of things he needed for the morning on his dresser, the wallet, the offering envelope, and his keys, all ready to go. When I got old enough, of course, I continued the ritual. I got my offering envelope ready to go Saturday night. Over the years, things change, but some things do remain the same. Dad and I still get our offering envelopes ready on Saturday nights before church. Uh, unfortunately, things changed big time with our stay-at-home order. COVID-19 has really thrown a monkey wrench into the way we live. I decided a few weeks ago to change to simply giving rather than doing my weekly offering envelope. It just makes sense. I don't have to worry about getting over here when the office is open and I don't have to rely on the mail service. And it does mean that my money goes right into the St. Luke's account and uh, it makes it a little easier for me. I think it's going to seem a little strange when we get back together again in person. I won't have something to put in the offering plate. I may have to change back again then. I'll give it some thought. Anyhow, that's all I have to say. Stay safe, and I hope to see you all in person very soon. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.